Hey guys. Hello, Marcus. Hi. Hello, Matt. Hi, Justin. Hey. Matt can put himself on camera today. Yes, I can. Oh, hey. nice. Hey. <laughs> Matt. How are you guys? Why don't you undo another button? <laughs> You'd be naked. <laughs> um, I think today we'll be doing the same thing we do every podcast, which is, you know, talk about new and exciting things in the mortgage world. Take okay. some questions from our from our viewers and uh, listen to uh, Marcus's uh, take on the market, which has been pretty... I almost swore there. You can't do that. But it's been pretty dark lately. Yeah. Listen, uh, the market is just responding to the cost of money increasing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's all about market cycles, right? We've, we're going through a different cycle now. Mm -hmm. During the pandemic, the, you know, like the five-year rate for money was less than half a percent. And now the five-year, like, zero risk cost of money is 3%. Right. And that change will change the value of assets. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, so you got to, you've got to expect asset prices are going to come down in that situation. Right. And if right. interest rates rise too quickly... Um, we could be in store for a rapid reduction in asset prices and a contraction of our economy, which means a recession. But is it going to get that bad? Listen, it depends on how quickly we increase interest rates. Right, right now, we are at a prime rate of 3.7%. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's because of the last 50 basis point hike. So um, we are, the Bank of Canada is telegraphing the major kind of banks are forecasting three more 50 basis point increases right if that happens i think we'll be in a recession yeah and it all kind of comes down to like what central bankers and what politicians are most fearful of is inflation right even more so than a recession right so you know they, they they're responding to data that they're seeing in the economy that inflation numbers are high. Right. I've been saying this now for almost a year. I think that now is the hottest inflation number. Like whatever number that just most recently came out is it. Right. It's not going up again. Right. It's you going think down. we're at the top of the inflation. Yeah, yeah. It's going down from here. Right. And I think that the fact that it's going down will provide a little more breathing room for the central bankers to take their foot off the brakes of the economy. Read, not to go forward with as dramatic an increase to the overnight rate as what is currently being forecasted. Right. Um, but again, like it's, it's like we talk about everything in economics is a cause and effect relationship, mm -hmm. right? You introduce something and then the central bankers have to adapt their monetary and fiscal policy and adjust for whatever has been introduced. Right. And when you talk about inflation, like on what level, like down to the everyday consumer, like, you know, tell us a little bit more. I saw a meme the other day on Instagram that said, well, you know, after two years, we're finally allowed out of the house, but every day is costing me $500. You know what I mean? Like, do you think that that's going to get any better? Yes. You want me to expand on that? Yes, expand. I want to. Uh, we're excited. I'm sure that I'm sure that the the everyday listener here is excited to hear about how much money is going to go back into their pockets. Listen, uh, gas is probably, I think, you know, pretty close to its top right now. Mm -hmm. I think, um, and there's all kinds of reasons for that, but I think we're kind of like. I, we have to hope that we're at the worst of the worst of the Ukraine conflict. Um, I think that, you know, kind of food prices and general cost of living increases are done for now. Mm -hmm. And I think that, like I said, I think that if we kind of continue to increase debt servicing costs, that will spell the kind of certainty that we're going into a recession. Right. You know, stock markets are already moved into a bear market, a 20% drop. And, you know, 
there's no doubt, right? It's more expensive to go out now, right? Mm-hmm. It's more expensive to go on a vacation. It's more expensive to go out for dinner. That's because everybody was cooped up. Everybody is going out for dinner and everybody's going to the bar and everybody is going on vacation. Um, so those things are going to cost more. Right. Um, you know, you would have been better served to go out during the pandemic. <laughs> Which I when, did. When nobody was going Which out. Which I did. I did. Do I think that's the solution, right? Yeah. I think, you know what, this actually, the whole More thing. pandemic? The whole thing comes down to the one simple tool that everybody should have in order to avoid overspending on things. And I think if we, if we could give, if every single person could get this one tool, I think we'd solve a lot of life's problems. What's the tool? A time machine. Okay. <laughs> to the past. Yeah. How well, far I mean, in the past? You could go to the future if you wanted to. Right. Mm-hmm. If you could pick one thing, this isn't really mortgage related. I'm just curious to know the answers. If you could pick one thing, you know how people say, well, ah, if I could go back in, in the past and write, you know, Yellow Submarine by the Beatles, I'd be rich. You know what I mean? Or like whatever. What would you tell yourself now? To make well, what would I go richer? to do? Yeah. Like if you, if you had information from the past, if you could time travel... What information would you like buy Tesla? Like, what would it be? I mean, first off, you need the seed money. So I think some lotto numbers, like one of those oh, yeah, $300 okay, million okay. Dollar Powerballs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. $300 million Powerball. Either that or, you know what would be really cool? Go back to like the late 1800s and somehow stake claim to Saudi Arabia. Right, 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 right. Like, the ru- be- I'm now the ruler of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't kill Khashoggi. I wouldn't have killed anybody. I'd be like the most benevolent dictator a country had ever seen. Just like open super social chill. policies. You know, everything I'm, Justin does is now legal. Yeah, I'm a social democrat and I'm a fiscal republican. That's that. how uh, Saudi Arabia would get run. I would take the Powerball numbers. That's a genius idea. Sure, but you, you, regardless of what you're going to do, if you want to go take over a country, you're going to need some seed capital too. Right, yeah. 100%. So first things first. I head, never said I wanted to take over a country. You head back, you head to like New York State in the late 90s, maybe pop in a couple times, right? Like maybe, you know, Farkas Laferis wins it in 83 and then Sarkis Nefaris wins it in 92. <laughs> Each time investing the Powerball winnings into what you know is going to win in the market. Right. By this point, you know, you got a cool $10 billion. Yeah. And then uh, you could take over Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Circus the fair. Well, you got to switch the names up, obviously, right? <laughs> oh, my God. Maybe like a mustache. You grow a mustache to go back one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good question. Does the time machine, like if you were to put like a prosthetic nose on, would that go through the time machine or is it only like, like, Oh, is it like some Terminator stuff where it's only like the being goes through and no clothes? Well, listen, I'm a student of time travel. I used to watch quantum leap when I was younger. So, but he always, I think showed up naked, right? Didn't he always end up naked? Or was that just Justin's dream? Oh, man. This is turning out to be like a super laid back podcast. I think we need it after the last podcast. Ah, Listen, you know what? The reason why I'm a little more laid back is I think we're going. I I was super worried about the way the central banks were communicating. And I mean, I'm still worried that interest rates are going to rise too quickly, but I'm a little less worried. Right. I I think that we're going to see a pause put on you know, this kind of telegraphed rapid increase in rates. Um, and I think that it should soften things a little bit. I'm still worried. Like, listen, man, interest rates have gone up very quickly. We have not felt the impact of those increases yet. Right. And inflation's going to come down now. And I don't know why this is going to be such a surprise. It's going to happen. Right. Interest, interest rates will be too high. And people are going to be like, oh, geez, I guess we increased them too much. Mm. And, you know, then the central bank has to act even more aggressively. We did an investor barbecue. We'll tell you more about it after we come back. I don't know why I used to let my bank handle my RRSPs. Then three years ago, I found Connect. 
they provided me with secured, consistent returns backed by real estate. Connect usually lends up to about 60% of the value of the property a borrower owns. And they do their due diligence on each loan using their years and years of experience. With great people and direct access to borrowers, Connect has averaged around 8% per year over the last six years. So what are you waiting for? It's never a bad time to make your annual RRSP contribution, so give Connect a call today. I love those testimonials. Those testimonials are solid. Yeah, listen, uh, the fun thing about these barbecues, which we weren't able to do for a couple of years because mm -hmm. of COVID. And it was so funny, right? Like this year it was like COVID didn't exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did anybody show up with a mask or anything weird like that? No. Nobody. No. No. I mean, there were some weird things Not that, that it's happened. weird. It's your personal choice. Yeah. But. Um, there was, it was fun. I had a really good time. And it's going to become more important now than ever that we do have a good core group of investors in our fund. Mm -hmm. And frankly, like there's never been a better time to invest in a fund like Connect. I know I say that all the time, but the movements in interest rates right now that are happening. So increasing interest rates are leaving people who have five year fixed rates at one and a half percent unable to refinance their mortgage. Yeah. Right. And yeah, I know yeah. we've got some calls and some emails on this today, but you cannot refinance a mortgage if you have a one and a half percent five year fixed rate to get fifty grand out. Yeah. Because I, you're gonna break it and you're gonna go into what is the best five year fixed rate right now? Four and a half percent approximately. Four percent. Four percent. Yeah, I mean, whatever you say, it's 50 basis points less. <laughs> Just, uh, you know. It, it, don't be cheap with the people. Give them the best rate, Justin. I always do. Okay. So, it doesn't make sense to triple the interest rate on a large amount of your debt in order to get a very small amount of debt. And we know, listen, people have become, for good or for bad, more likely for bad than for good, people have become heavily reliant on the equity in their homes. Going into a difficult time when the cost of everything is increasing, you may still be relying on the equity in your home or credit cards in order to service whatever's going on in your life. Hmm. So if you have a half a million dollar mortgage and you need 50,000 bucks, the old approach to call Connect up 99% of the time in this declining interest rate environment it's going to make sense to break your existing first mortgage and get a new first mortgage. Yeah. Because the 500 you have was probably at 2% and tacking on an extra 50, you're going to end up with a 1.5% five-year fixed rate. Well, that doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. Your money's now at 1.5 on the 500 grand and you're going to end up switching to a new $550,000 first mortgage in order to get just $50,000 out and that rate's going to be 4%. Mm -hmm. So it's something we talk about all the time. Weighted average cost of capital. Weighted average cost of capital is really simple. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's what is the average cost of all of the money that you've borrowed if you weight each of the interest rates associated with each of the debts, right? So if you have a 20% credit card and that credit card is only representative, the balance on that credit card is only representative of 1% of your debt, it will not heavily influence the rate at which your weighted average cost of capital increases or decreases. But if you have a really cheap first mortgage with a great weighting, a great percentage of the amount of debt that you have, and you need a very small amount of money to add to it in order to kind of, you know, pay for things and continue or invest or whatever it is, it's very unlikely that you should break that first mortgage. Mm -hmm. It's far more probable that you should take a well-priced second mortgage. Mm -hmm. And depending on what your credit score and your income situation is, Connect can give you that amount of money. We can match it to the maturity of your existing first mortgage so that when it comes time to refinance that first mortgage, you take all of it out. Yeah. And in the meantime, if it doesn't make sense from a weighted average cost of capital perspective, then you break the mortgage. Yeah. Or you yeah, don't yeah. take the money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? But I've seen us doing second mortgages now as low as 4.5% right. for very well-qualified borrowers on shorter terms, for sure. But the money's out there, right? Mm -hmm. Like, make no mistake, there is still money chasing deals. Lots of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, 
let's get to an email because we're basically talking about the same thing here. So let's hear from, uh, from some of our, give me one moment. All right. So we got an email here. Uh, Hey guys, I currently have a first mortgage with, which I'm happy with. I got it back in 2020 when rates were around one and a half percent. Okay. One and a half. My, my issue is now that I want to pull more equity out of my house and don't want to jeopardize that rate. My mortgage balance is really low. It's around 250 grand and my house is worth more than a million now for sure. I've been looking to into home equity loans, but I found them too expensive, especially with rates rising right now. Are there other options out there? I mean, I think that the person is just looking for the home equity loans in the wrong places, right? Hmm. That's what I would You know what's funny is like how well versed the borrowers have become. Yeah. Whereas before that would have just been second mortgage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um what would you do right now? How would you advise this borrower, Justin? I mean, I would first get a little bit more information on what these home equity loans are that 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 they've seen that they've seen that they were too expensive, right? Because you know, we do a lot of outside home equity loans as well when when it's needed and you know these rates are 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 not like connect you know what i mean we're looking at you know 10 11 12 13 14 percent here right right so so you know i think that they might just not be looking in the right place right and there are other options too if they don't want to do like a home equity loan where you get all your money at once we can do a line of credit we can do a lot of different things that that would you know kind of be more um user friendly depending on what they're looking to do right you know what else is pretty interesting is that i've noticed a lot of times people come and they're looking for a second mortgage Mm -hmm. but because of their qualification we can get them a line of credit like Mm -hmm. a home equity line of credit proper yeah registered in second position at prime prime plus a half yeah 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 yeah. so i think that it's a lot of it has to do with the advice that people are getting. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes people will just walk into their bank and they'll be surprised to find out that the bank doesn't want to help them or is unable to help them. You have to understand that the person at the bank doesn't necessarily understand all of the, even that bank's lending abilities, mm-hmm. let alone every other bank's lending abilities. Mm-hmm. And some banks become more aggressive and some are less aggressive based on kind of timing in the year. But you have options. Like there's a lot of lenders out there right now. Um, there's like that interesting MCAP product that goes in second position. That's like really well priced second mortgages, like yeah, equal to like, the existing first mortgage rate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you if you've just made like one call to your bank or one call to a broker that maybe doesn't have the knowledge or the suite of products available to them, or they're biased. Yeah, I mean, let's just not assume everyone's biased, Matt. Come on, let's, I thought we were doing a feel-good podcast today. <laughs> but yeah, or if they're biased. But I mean, I think, that, listen, I always say, right? Like, you should call Connect. We built Connect for a reason this way, right? Yeah. We made Connect unbiased. We made it to be your best option. We know it's the best option. Yeah. Um, so if you are wondering... You know, home equity loan versus breaking your mortgage, which kind of sounds like, you know, this this person's kind of assessing what's available to them in the marketplace. Yeah. If you don't if you don't have all of your options, if you're not getting all of the information out there, you're doing yourself a disservice, right? Yeah. You can't. I mean, you can't go to the cow store and want bacon, right? <laughs> no, I don't think you can. <laughs> Where is the cow store? I don't know. I was trying to think of something that was like super, super thought out and <laughs> really smart. Yeah. That missed the mark. It did. It definitely did. You can't go to the cow store <laughs> if you want bacon. You heard it first here. It's a good one. I'm going to use that one. <laughs> See? To people that don't speak English. <laughs> Should we read another email? Should we cut to another? uh... Let's do another testimonial and then come back and do an email. All right, let's do it. Did you know that you have over $60,000 of investment room in your TFSA? I didn't until I spoke to the folks at Connect. Before Connect, I thought investments were for anyone but me. 
Everything I heard were horror stories about people's investments going up and down and their returns being eaten up by management fees. With Connect, I invested $5,000 to start. I put the money in my TFSA and kept adding money every year into my investments. I earned 8% for the last six years and now I have over $90,000 in my TFSA. My TFSA has kept growing and I don't have to pay any taxes on the returns. Not now, not ever. And we're back. We're back. We had to try that a couple times. I love back. the testimonials. They're good. God, it's, it's a great product to invest in. It's a good community. Mm -hmm. Like it's a good group of investors. Family, community. Yeah, it's those fun. Words. And it was fun. Yeah. It was a like fun barbecue. Um, the Cirque du Soleil dancers were amazing. Yes. Yeah. The chainsaw juggler was awesome. And <clears throat> the magician. I had to put the... I was the one who had to grab the crotch strap. I know, I saw, that. Was I saw putting that. On he was really good, eh? Jacket. He so was he good. won like some big yeah, yeah, yeah. Penn and America's Teller. America's Got Talent thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very talented. Yeah, yeah. He was really good. He did a card trick where he was like trying to show me like he was doing the, where, you know, what card did you pick out kind of thing. And then all of a sudden, he was like, I'll teach you how to do it. And then he was like, oh, wait, I can't teach you if, and then his like, the card was like in his mouth. Like another card that we've anyways it was you had to be there like it was a lot better in person than just me explaining it on a podcast mm -hmm. but it was good it was good i was amazed yeah you were amazed yeah, i was amazed i found the whole party was kind of like wanting to have bacon but going to the cow <laughs> store <laughs> all right okay back to back to um making money count making money count um all right okay we got one here hey guys um, been listening to your show for a while now. My name is Andy, I'm a, and I've been in a variable rate mortgage uh, for a bit. I've seen rates rising a lot these past few months, and I'm starting to get really nervous. I don't want my monthly payments to start overwhelming me. Do you guys think it's a good idea for me to lock in right now, or should I wait? That's classic. Yeah, classic. Classic. Yeah. classic. I mean, <clears throat> there's a lot of missing information there, right? Like, what is your rate? What is your mortgage balance? you know, what is your, what, what is your overall situation look like? Right. Because it's hard to give someone advice when you don't know the ins and outs of their, you know, kind of financial situation, but I'm still a firm believer in the variable. Yeah. Right? Listen, I think he missed the boat, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think you stay variable right now. hundred percent. I mean, I I'm staying, I have variable, right? I'm yeah. Variable. It would it like 3.7, 1% below that you're at 2.7% on a variable. Otherwise you're switching to 4.5. Yeah, which Four. yeah, and and if you and if what you said in the beginning was was correct, and and you know if one and a half percent is what everyone's kind of thinking, or the economists say we're going to be rising, I mean the spread between you know two point seven yeah, and right. four and a half is is not is, is greater than that, right? Right. So I mean it's just like it's simple math, right? Yeah, yeah. So if we think we're going to see another one point five percent rate increase, then you're going to take this to a five point two percent prime rate right off mm -hmm. 3.7 yep yeah and you're going to be one percent below that yeah so at the peak of where we think we can go push interest rates to in order to get a recession which is not what we want mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and when a recession happens you better believe rates are going to come back down mm -hmm. so i don't think it's time right now to lock into a fixed rate at four i wouldn't have locked into a fixed rate at three and a half yeah 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 i wouldn't do it yeah i didn't do it yeah, exactly. Same. Uh, so, listen, I think if you need money right now, it's more of a question of how to get it and to make sure that you're not getting taken, mm -hmm. to make sure that you're paying a fair price for the amount of risk that you bring to the table. Risk is all based on how much your house is worth, what your existing first mortgage is, what your credit looks like, mm -hmm. what your income is. Your personal covenant, yeah. Yeah. And you go to a good broker, you know, ideally it's us, mm -hmm. but whoever that good broker is going to shop for you, they're going to find you options and, and they're, they're going to help you navigate this period of time, which is a weird time, right? Interest rates are increasing. 
you know, it's hard to figure out which option you should go with. You kind of do have to think a little bit with an aim towards what's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. But if you can put all that together, I think you can end, end up in a pretty strong position. The other thing I was going to say too is some, depending on, you know, adjustable or variable, some mortgages have uh, like a fixed payment, right? Like myself, I have um, variable rate mortgage, so my payments don't change, right? Mm -hmm. My payments stay the same. My amortization changes as the prime rate changes, but I know what my monthly payment is going to be like every month. So if you're in a product where your payment is changing and you're concerned about that, and we can find you something that's relatively uh, similar in rate where your payment is not going to change, then that might be something that we can take a look at as well. See, like I would heavily encourage a variable rate mortgage, similar to the one that you have, for someone that had any ancillary debt, right? Right. Because that interest rate on that mortgage, you're never going to get a better rate on any of the downstream credit that you have after that. Right. Everything will be more expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So use the extra cash that you have to make sure that you're not carrying any other debt. And it's okay to leave your AM schedule as it is on that mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. Your AM schedule is going to fluctuate as mm -hmm. those payments fluctuate, as those payments stay constant and interest rates fluctuate. But as long as you use the extra capital to prevent yourself from having higher interest rate debt, then you're winning the game. Yeah, no, agreed. Yeah, that's agreed. good. Agreed very much so. Yeah. I was going to say the best part about the <clears throat> investor barbecue that we had the other day is <clears throat> whenever I was at the front of the of where people were kind of coming in hearing people say, "Oh my god, I, oh, I would introduce myself. Oh my god, where's this person? Where's this person?" You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. so excited to meet the crew. I mean, <clears throat> These are people that we deal with. I mean, uh, there was a lot of borrowers there too, right? Um, so these are people that we deal with day in and day out. And, and you know, sometimes, especially over the past couple of years, it's, you can't put a face to the, to the voice, right? Except, you know, over Zoom, which is just not the same. People seem generally happy to be there. Generally happy to meet everybody. 100%. Some people seemed very drunk. <clears throat> yeah, there was some drunk. It wasn't me. No, it wouldn't be it you. Me. No, it wouldn't no. be me. But it was a lot of fun, and some people wanted to let loose. Yeah. I think it's been a lot of time, long time since people got to let loose like yeah, that. So yeah, it was good. yeah, yeah. People want to. It's good. Let them enjoy themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 100%. And honestly, if you're out there and you're thinking that this is some kind of group of people that we've known forever, a lot of them we've known for quite some time. Like we've got investors that have been investing with us at Connect. Um, or through with me in in mortgages for almost 20 years um, and those people were there mm -hmm. um, but there were also uh, a f quite a few people mm -hmm. that had either seen our show on chch had heard our podcast on spotify mm -hmm. or had heard us on 1010 when we were on 1010 yeah and took the opportunity to call in to do some research invest with connect and then they were at the barbecue yeah it, Which was so great. I right? agree. I agree. That's, yeah. that's funny because, yeah, I just, yes, I remember being kind of blown away. Like I was speaking with some, someone and, uh, and he was saying uh, that he was, you know, driving and he had CHCH on and me and you were chatting and, and he, the, the only thing he could say was like, honey, write down the name of this company. You know what I mean? And then, and then, and then he was at the barbecue. He so invested, great. He reached out to us. I think he got in contact with our lovely Nick. And, uh, and, and invested with us. So. Yeah, no, listen, it's great. I think, like, I, I was a little bit worried that, like, our, our barbecue's somewhat kind of folksy. Right. You know what I mean? Like, but we're kind of folksy, right? Like, mm -hmm. we're kind of like, you know, down to earth and no nonsense about how we deal with our investors about how we deal with our borrowers so if you're expecting something else you're not going to get it from us right mm -hmm. connect is based on connecting canadian investors to canadian borrowers and having no other middlemen and i think that the more kind of institutionalized a, a company becomes it's almost more of a, a way to introduce buffers and fees and middlemen into a dynamic Mm -hmm. And all that does is it either increases the cost to the borrower, 
no good. No good. Or decreases the return that's paid out to an investor. Also no good. Also no good, yeah. So because of the way Connect started, you know, uh, for my mom and my dad, who were there at the start of the um, barbecue, mm-hmm. um, because of... Your mom said hi to me, by the way, and I couldn't speak to her because I was on the phone with a client, actually, but very sweet. Oh, she, she came by and she was like... She'll understand. She was, yeah. We used oh, to I do, when we used to do the home shows, we used to do the national home show. Yeah, yeah. My mom would take a week off work and work in the booth. That's so nice. Yeah. And I remember I was like, the first show that she came to, she was like telling every single person that came to the booth that she was my mom. She was like, go on, Marcus's mom. And then I was like, I pulled her aside. I was like, mommy, you, you can't really <laughs> tell everyone you're my mom. It makes the company look really small. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, so then the next year, she was, she didn't make, you don't have to tell my mom something twice. She came and she had her maiden name on her name tag. Oh, nice. Yeah. And she was like, she would speak to people and then she would bring them over to talk to me at the booth. You know how these home shows go, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She'd bring them over to talk to me at the booth and she would whisper in my ear as the person was, she was introducing, this is John and Marcus. I didn't say that I was your mother. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. I love that. And then by the final year that we were like the last year we did the home shows before we decided that we were no longer doing home shows. Yeah. Uh, I was like, I called her before, like the night before the show. And I was like, you know what, mommy? You can tell people you're my mom. Connect's big enough now. Okay. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, the yeah, company is yeah. naturally big enough yeah. that you can just go around and say that you're my mom. Um, but anyways, what I was trying to get to was that because of the way, like Connect was established for my mom and my dad, right? And it was a way to get as much of the return that a borrower was paying into the hand of the investor. And when you do that, two people benefit, right? The borrower benefits because their cost of borrowing is efficient. It's priced for the risk. And the investor benefits because no one is taking money from the money that they've invested, right? As an investor, if you're sitting here right now listening to this show or watching this show, and you are considering investing, when you invest with Connect, you're putting money directly into the hands of the borrower. You're allowing us at Connect to select the best borrowers for you. And we are experts at doing that, right? Mm -hmm. We've never had a loss on any of the loans that we've ever done in our history. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason for that. We're picking the right borrowers. Yeah. And the reason why we're able to pick the right borrowers is because we have a cost of capital, which is more efficient Mm -hmm. because we don't pay anybody to bring us our investor money. Mm -hmm. The only thing we pay for is a barbecue. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right? Barbecue, communication with our investors, but we do not pay anybody to source capital. Mm -hmm. So if you're sitting there wondering like, wow, I I wonder why my rep at TD never told me to invest in Connect. Well, let you in on a little secret. They're only going to tell you to invest in things that pay them to tell you to invest in those things. Mm-hmm. And Connect will never do that. Yeah. So if, if, if you're interested in investing in the real estate market, I understand that it's a really turbulent time right now and you need to find the right custodian for your money. You should reach out to Connect. And you should see why all of these things that make us kind of folksy and quirky and different are all the things that you should be looking for Mm -hmm. in a place to invest. Yeah. They're all the things that are going to save you money. Mm -hmm. Like people that put their names and their faces behind where you are investing your money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just like a lot of people, a lot of these testimonials echo that, but a lot of people are simply surprised that something like this exists. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we're now starting to really grow this business and scale this business is a testament to the foundation that it's built on, right? Yeah, absolutely. There's no bullshit. There is no bullshit. You know what my favorite thing, <clears throat> the favorite thing that I hear is when people, when I'm telling people about this, and even some of the people at the mix, or at the, sorry, at the barbecue, um, you know, when I'm talking about, well, this is our returns, this is what it looks like, and then I hear the whole, which is kind of echoes what you just said, and I hear the whole, well, I get that at this mix, right? Well, we're also a brokerage, right? We're a full service brokerage and we're doing deals with that, Mick. And we know what they're lending and, and what they're lending. I mean, you know, if you believe in the same thing we believe, which is like 
you know, to be safe and keep our, our, our investors' money safe, they're not doing that, right? They're giving you that same return, but they're lending at 80, 90, you know, 75% loan to value, which is just not something that, you know, we're generally all too interested in doing. I mean, if the exit's there, then sure, right? Um, there are instances, but, but, but it's because of what you're saying right now, like they're paying brokers, they're paying, you know, people to bring the money and, and that's just not what we're about, right? How can a MIC compete with us if they call us to send them business? Yeah. That, yeah. Like how could that possibly be a competitor? Yeah. If they're phoning us to offer us commission to send them mortgages, what type of mortgages are we going to send them? Certainly not the ones we like. Yeah. That we, we feel are risk-free, right? Certainly not the good ones. Anyways, listen, it's a weird market and we have grown slowly, but that is why we are in the position that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. That is why going into an environment where real estate prices could drop 20 or 30%, I'm confident in the book of business that we have, in, in the loans that we have, in the borrowers that we've chosen, mm -hmm. in the way that we operate our business. Same. And I'm excited. I mean, I'm not excited for a drop in real estate prices. I'm, no, one, no one is. Yeah, but I'm excited. You know, the, there's a saying, you probably know it because you, you're very good with analogies. <laughs> but a rising tide raises all ships. Right. And that's what we've seen over the course of this, this period of time, right? If you want to get to the pig store and you got to <laughs> take your boat there, you take your boat there, well, the tide is high. Right. Right? Well, if you've gone to the wrong store and you need to turn around and go to the beef store and the tide's gone out, your boat will be stranded. At the pig store. And you won't be able to get to the beef store. You have to get out to go to the beef store. <laughs> Depending on how much you ate at the pig store, you might not even want to walk. You might just want to go right to bed. <laughs> And if it's a sailboat that you've gone on with a <laughs> just fallen right over. Anyway. I thought it was a good analogy. Yeah. It was like a butcher shop thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a butcher shop thing. I was actually going to go with, it's like taking Marcus to the wine rack. <sighs> that, see? Yeah, I wouldn't go there. That one you get. That one you get. Yeah. All right. Well, should we wrap it up? Wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Put a bow on it. That was your episode of Make Money Count. It was a little more laid back than the last episode, which was very nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, we love you all. <laughs>